Bringing up a ton in any sport is an achievement, especially for a golf club. So Manor Park's 700 members were proud to celebrate their centenary recently. Established as the Karori Golf Club in 1913, the club was forced to shift to the Hutt Valley 13 years later, resulting in the name change. The new course was set in native bush and built along the banks of the Hutt River, which prompted some problems for the club's early members. The members of that day uh, spent uh, many hours of uh, toil removing rocks from the river uh, run and um, plantings, etc. In fact, during the early years of membership, members were required to uh, spend an hour after a round of golf removing rocks from the course. That hard work has benefited today's members who enjoy a scenic, tree-lined, 18-hole course that offers a challenge to golfers of all levels. Many of those members gathered at the club recently for a week of celebrations and to learn of Manor Park's new strategy. It's a crowded market. Just down the Hutt River, there are six golf clubs. There's not the time in the modern family to spend on golf, uh, and we have to appeal in a different way. With the wildlife and the natural setting, um, we're going to rename ourselves um, Manor Park Golf Sanctuary. With the name change comes not only a wildlife habitat, but a complete change of philosophy. Everything from a reduction in chemicals used on course to the way clubhouse light bulbs are changed will contribute to an environmentally friendly golf club. All this will build on 100 years of Manor Park propelling New Zealand's top talent such as Michael Campbell, Stephen Scarhill, Lynette Brookie and Gareth Patterson from Wellington to the world stage. It's probably some of the best practice facilities in New Zealand. Had they have not been so good, I possibly would have been forced to move up to Auckland. But yeah, as a pro, I don't think you can get much better than you know a world-class chipping green and a practice fairway that you can hit drivers on. But it's not just the practice areas that make Manor Park such an attractive option for all golfers, with the course itself offering plenty of challenges with its tight tee shots and tricky greens. Nowhere is that more evident than on the par 5 seventh hole. Hi, today we're going to play the seventh hole at Manor Park. It's a 452 metre par 5. The most important part of this hole, the tee shot. You've got out of bounds on the right, trees on the left. A good straight driver with a little fade on it for the right hander, perfect. As club pro, Murray McDonald explains an accurate driver is always needed at Manor Park. It's uh, long and narrow, plenty of trees, um, demanding driving course. Keep it in play, it's not, not a hard course, but if you're not having a good driving day, it can be a pretty tough one to play. Most of our long par fours are heading south, and you get a strong southerly, and the place can play very, very long. It depends on the wind, sometimes it's you know, pretty tame course, sometimes can be really difficult. It's a good, good all-round course. Yeah, not a bad roll. Little tap in five and that's always good. So that's the seventh hole at Manor Park. Five is always a great score on this hole. The on-course aspect combined with the newly established wildlife element make Manor Park Golf Sanctuary a truly unique experience for golfers from the Wellington region and beyond. We're hoping that we can uh, leverage the, the natural uh, setting and uh, the consciousness that the golfers of the future will have for the environment uh, so that we can appeal to them. Manor Park Golf Sanctuary. It's a club that truly has its sights set on the next 100 years.